This is 4.2 membrane notes. The essential question is, what are the major membranes and how do they differ in structure, location, and function? Talk about a membrane, if you recall back in biology, the cell membrane. Membrane is a thin covering or a lining. There are two major types of membrane. The first is called an epithelial membrane. And the locations of epithelial membrane is going to be kind of like the epithelial tissue where it's going to uh, cover body surfaces or line cavities or organs. And the major functions of the epithelial membrane is for lubrication or keeping the organs or the body structures moist. And it is made up of both epithelial and connective tissue. There are three types of epithelial membrane. These are cutaneous membrane, which include the skin or any coverings of the body. Mucous membrane, also called the mucosa, which include locations such as the digestive, respiratory, urinary, and reproductive tract. And then serous membrane, which is also called serosa. And these type of membranes are found in areas where it's not open to the exterior. The first type of epithelial membrane is the cutaneous membrane. They are located on the body surface and it includes the skin which is a major organ of the integumentary system. The type of tissue that make up the cutaneous membrane is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium with dense connective tissue underneath it. The second type of epithelial membrane is the mucous membrane. They are found lining cavities that are open to exterior, which means that you are able to get to this area without cutting into the body. These type of membranes are found in areas such as respiratory, digestive, and urinary tract. The type of tissue that make up these areas vary depending on the location. Recall from last unit that respiratory tract is lined with pseudostratified, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. The digestive is lined with simple columnar epithelium and the urinary tract is lined with transitional epithelium. And the underlying connective tissue is the loose connective tissue. The function of the mucous membrane is for absorption, but the main function is for the production and secretion of mucus. And if you want to get an idea of mucus, it is the kind of stuff, the fluid that comes out of your nasal cavity when you blow your nose. Notice that it's slimy and it's sticky. And it's good for trapping any kind of foreign particles. And that's what its purpose is for. On the right, you see the location of the mucous membrane. The two areas. The, the, this is your digestive tract here. This is the lining of the digestive tract. It is the lining of the, the respiratory tract. Okay. The last type of epithelial membrane is the serous membrane. They are located lining and covering organs that are close to the exterior, which means that you cannot get to this area without cutting into the body. The type of epithelial tissue that make up the serous membrane is simple squamous epithelium and underneath it is the loose connective tissue. The function of the serous membrane is for production and secretion of serous fluid. Serous fluid is more like your saliva, it is watery, and the main function of serous fluid is for lubrication, which means keeping uh, organs moist. Unlike mucous membrane, serous membrane have a double layer the visceral layer is the layer closer to the organ or which, it's, which is the deeper layer. 
and the parietal layer is the outer layer that's further away from the organ or it's the more superficial layer. And the picture on the bottom right is kind of showing you how the, that double layer is created. If you kind of think of the, the fist as an organ, the covering in the red folds on itself and creates this double layer. The outer layer is called the parietal layer and the inner layer is called the visceral layer. And the space inside it is filled with the serous fluid and this is the cavity that's created. It is not an empty space, it is filled with fluid. Unlike mucous membrane, serous membrane have a, a different name depending on the location. So for the abdominal area, the name is peritoneum. Around the lungs is the pleura. The covering around the heart is called the pericardium. Those are the only three that we're going to concentrate on this unit. But you'll notice that when we get to the skeletal unit, the bones have a covering, serous membrane covering called periosteum. When we talk about the nervous system, like the organ brain, then you're going to find out that it is covered with perineurium. When we talk about the muscles, muscles are covered with perimyceum. So notice that the names of the serous membrane changes with the location. First note that mucous membrane is also found in the abdominal area and around the lungs because they are, the inner lining of it is exposed to the outside. So mucous membrane would be the actual inner lining of those organs. Okay, the inner lining, inside lining of the lungs would be mucous membrane. Don't get that mixed up with serous membrane. Serous membrane is the covering around these organs and it has a double layer. So when we look at visceral peritoneum, we're talking about the layer that is actually covering the organ, directly touching the organ we're talking about, all of the abdominal organs. When we talk about parietal peritoneum, we are talking about the layer that is on the outer covering. And again, there is a space between the parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum, and that space is called peritoneal. cavity. When we talk about the heart, we call it the pericardium. So the inner covering of the heart, we call it visceral pericardium. The outer covering would be the parietal pericardium. And then the space between those two layers is called the pericardial cavity. Lastly, when we talk about the lungs, the word we use is pleura. So the visceral pleura will be the covering directly on top of the lungs. That's your visceral pleura. And parietal pleura would be the covering on the outside, directly on the outside. And, and then the space in between those is called the pleural cavity. And all of those cavities are filled with serous fluid. Connective tissue membrane does not fall under the 
category as the epithelial membrane. It is a completely separate type of a membrane. And there is only one example or one type of connective tissue membrane, which is the synovial membrane. The location of the synovial membrane is found in joints, and it's at the inner lining of the joint cavity or the joint capsule. The function of the synovial membrane is to produce synovial fluid and their job is to reduce friction between the joints so that the the um, the bones are not rubbing against each other and remember that the ends of bones uh, are covered with the hyaline cartilage which is also called the articular cartilage and you don't want those two areas to be touching because eventually they will wear down the type of tissue that make up the synovial membrane is connective tissue only. There is no epithelial tissue. Here is a diagram of a knee joint specifically, but it could be any type of synovial joints. And you need to be able to identify the synovial membrane. Synovial membrane is in the red, which lines the inside of the joint capsule. Joint capsule is made up of a dense connective tissue like a ligament and this is your joint capsule here so just inside the lining of the joint capsule is the synovial membrane the joint capsule is important because it creates this synovial synovial cavity which is in the yellow and notice because of this space which is filled with serous fluid Notice that the two bones, which is covered in this articular cartilage, do not touch. That is important. Okay, So that synovial membrane creates a space between the two bones so they're not rubbing up against each other. Synovial fluid is not as thick as mucous fluid, but it is not as watery as uh, serous fluid. It's in between. Okay, so they have some a gel kind of consistency, which kind of keeps the joint from the bones from rubbing against each other. 4.2 notes homework. Number one, explain how the double layers of the serous membrane are created. Number two, how do serous and mucous membrane differ in location and function? Three, how does connective tissue membrane differ from epithelial membrane?